So you might have heard that vertical indoor farming is being touted as the next big revolution in sustainable agriculture. While indeed there are many great benefits derived from vertical farming technologies, it is far from being perfect. And in fact, there are still many great disadvantages to vertical farming that we all need to be aware of. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel, it's Oliver here. So first of all, one of the biggest disadvantages of vertical farming is the high startup costs involved in setting up a vertical farming operation. So as of now, most vertical farming technologies are still rather new, and this means that they are still quite expensive because companies producing them are not yet able to utilize economies of scale to bring down the cost of components, tools, and manufacturing processes. In addition, the global supply chain issues that all of us have been experiencing during the last few years have increased the cost of many crucial components needed for controlling and automating vertical farms. Together, all of this means that setting up a new vertical farming operation is still extremely expensive. However, the positive spin to this is that all of the technology, components and manufacturing is becoming cheaper and cheaper as the market matures and more players enter the market. Anyways, the next huge and pretty much the biggest single disadvantage of vertical farming compared to field farming is the limited number of crops that can be grown in these systems. So this is not only in terms of space, but also in terms of economic viability. So as of today, most vertical farming systems, like the ones that you can see right behind me, are suitable to grow small horticultural crops like leafy greens, small vegetables, and a small assortment of berries. Still, I should mention that there are companies that grow crops like potatoes, mushrooms, cucumbers, and tomatoes in their vertical farming systems. However, many of these crops still require a lot of research and most of them are not yet quite economically viable when grown in vertical farming systems in large scale. In addition, while the current selection of plants being grown in vertical systems does include berries like strawberries, one of the big hurdles that need to be solved before growing flowering plants can be scaled on an industrial level is making sure that the plants are able to pollinate correctly. So while the pollination of flowering plants is normally done by bees, birds and even the wind, these natural components are of course absent from the controlled environment systems. So while some vertical farming companies have replaced the natural pollination by a manual <laughs> human-made process, this will of course become economically unsustainable as soon as the farming operations are scaled up even slightly. Also, while companies like Polybe and Edite are working on some actually really novel technological solutions for automated pollination, the question of pollinating plants in vertical farms is still a significant hurdle that will require sizable investments long into the future. So as a segue and relating to what I just said about crop limitations, the second massive problem with vertical farming is that it cannot replace the farming of tall, field crops and other protein dense plants because they simply do not physically fit into the vertical farming systems. And even if they did, the economics simply do not yet support the viability of such operations. So the reason why this is such an issue is because the majority of field farming around the globe is in fact dedicated for these kind of tall field crops. And since vertical indoor farming is not able to replace the production of these types of plants, it is questionable, if not entirely unethical, to argue that vertical farming could somehow fix all of the sustainability issues coming from conventional farming. While vertical farming can work as a replacement for the traditional field farming of small horticultural crops, this simply isn't the case, at least as of now, with large-scale field farming of grains, wheats, and for example, soybeans. Oh, by the way, having mentioned this, our team has actually already successfully grown soybeans in the systems that you can see behind me, so it's absolutely doable, but the economics are still arr, questionable to say the least. Oh, and by the way, on this channel, we talk about everything you need to know about hydroponics and vertical farming. So if you are interested in any of these topics, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. All right, so moving on, the next big disadvantage of vertical farming is the reliability on technology and specifically the need for the technology to work without any issues. So as I've mentioned multiple times in previous videos, the innovative technologies and high levels of automation are exactly the reason that makes vertical farming so exciting and promising. However, this reliability on technology can also be considered as one of the big risks involved with the vertical farming. This is especially true when considering that the technology has not yet matured and there are many unknowns that come 
companies operating in this field have not been able to solve just yet. So to give you a concrete example of what I actually mean, let's consider the irrigation systems in vertical farms. So because most vertical farms are operated as hydroponic systems, in short, meaning that instead of using soil, the systems grow plants by introducing a nutrient-rich water solution directly into the plant root zones, it is absolutely crucial that the irrigation systems work without any issues. So while using no soil is actually one of the great benefits of hydroponics, and hydroponic systems can achieve higher production and faster growth cycles because of this, it also means that the plants do not have any nutrient or water reserves in case the irrigation system fails. So in a worst case scenario where the irrigation system fails, or for example, the farm loses all power needed to run the irrigation, it is more than likely that one can lose significant portions, if not the entire harvest. So if we consider the amount of risks involved in relying on technology, this simply means that vertical farming companies need to build in large amounts of fail-safes, making sure that there are no single points of failure that could ruin the entire harvest or otherwise significantly impact the production in the long term. Anyways, talking about the technological side of things, the next big negative about vertical farming is the high energy usage that it requires. So there are many different aspects to the high energy usage, including, you know, running the automation and irrigation systems, HVAC systems, and so on. But the biggest usage actually comes from the artificial lighting needed to grow plants indoors. So of course, when we bring farming processes from outside, to indoor spaces, we lose the biggest advantage that conventional field farming has for itself, which is the free energy provided by the sun. While LED lights have seen some incredible development and they are becoming more and more energy efficient, the amount of LED lights required to run a vertical indoor farm is still quite staggering. So in terms of the negatives, this not only means that the variable costs in terms of electricity are still pretty high, but actually even worse, the reliability on LED technology is the biggest single reason for why most vertical farms are not yet able to become more environmentally sustainable compared to field farming. So of course, the sustainability of vertical farming is more complicated than this. And if you're interested in learning more about the environmental sustainability of vertical farming, make sure to check out this video where I break down this topic in much more detail. So moving on, the next disadvantage of vertical farming is the need for highly educated workforce and the subsequent high labor costs. So this should be pretty clear already by now, but just to reiterate, vertical farming does rely on new and novel technologies and and a high level of automation that allows the process to be scaled upwards while still being economically viable. This reliance on technology and the technological know-how also means that vertical farming companies need to hire a lot of highly educated people from a multitude of specialized fields like engineering, software development, agricultural sciences, data management, and so on. So this naturally means that companies in this field have to be prepared to pay higher than average salaries in order to build a talented and experienced workforce. Having said this, I should also note that while this reliance on highly educated employees is a negative in terms of the economics, especially at the start of your operations, one should also keep in mind that using the technologies developed by this workforce also is the reason that makes scaling vertical farming economically viable in the long term. So while it's a disadvantage in the beginning, it's also a necessity in order to become competitive. So continuing on the topic of highly educated and experienced employees, the next disadvantage of vertical farming is the lack of experienced people in this particular field in the current labor markets. So while vertical indoor farming has been researched, for example, by NASA already for a few decades, it is still a rather new technology when it comes to commercial use. And this also means that there are not that many people around the globe who have worked around the technologies and systems specifically related to this field. So this is in fact one of the big issues that many vertical farming company CEOs talk about when asked about the biggest challenge facing the field in the near future. So what this actually means to companies is that instead of looking for people who have previous experience in vertical farming, companies in this field should accept the fact that these people are few and far in between. And instead of chasing people like this, one should focus on hiring people with the necessary skill sets and abilities to specifically adapt to this new field by taking their education and experience 
from other fields and implementing them in this new fascinating context. So as you can see, vertical farming is still far from being perfect. And if you're interested in learning more about the environmental sustainability of vertical farming, make sure to check out this video for a more detailed breakdown.